Good afternoon, boys and girls. Today, in the class nine syllabus, we will be starting with *The Merchant of Venice*. *The Merchant of Venice* by William Shakespeare. Now, in your class nine portion of *Merchant of Venice*, divided into five acts, every Shakespearean play had five acts, and each act has a number of scenes. Now, *Merchant of Venice* is in the ICSE class nine and class ten syllabus. but it is divided or as we say the syllabus has been bifurcated the english literature syllabus has been bifurcated we have for example in poetry we have the first six poems first six stories and in merchant of venice we have act 1 two scenes act 2 nine scenes and act 3 scene 1 as the portion of class 9 and then in class 10 the remaining poems the remaining stories and the remaining acts with its scenes in merchant of venice today we're going to start with merchant of venice by william shakespeare now when i did poetry and when i did prose and when i do merchant of venice you will find i'm explaining in the same way but since merchant of venice is by william shakespeare and shakespearean language is not the usual english language he has say for example believe me truly speaking he does not say this in shakespearean language it is in sooth meaning truly speaking so his language concept is a little different so at first it may seem a little um, stretching it may seem a little boring but nevertheless merchant of venice is a very interesting story i won't tell you the story in details many of you must have read it many of you will read it now the merchant of venice by william shakespeare who is the merchant of venice venice we know is a very famous place a place known for its business known for its flourishing business to be more particular known for its stock market now who is this merchant of venice antonio antonio is a character who is referred to as the merchant of venice his friend is bassanio who depends on antonio a lot as a friend as a philosopher as a guide and who borrows money from antonio we have other characters also the villain of this play is shylock antonio is a money lender that means he lends money for people who want to borrow money Shylock is also a money lender but the difference between the two of them is Shylock lends money taking interest and Antonio lends money without any interest Shylock is a Jew Christians and Jew they don't like each other they have a very long a past enmity with each other As a matter of fact no one likes Shylock because first of all he is a Jew and second of all they think he is very cruel ruthless who just believes in money Shylock's daughter is Jessica now the main part of the story is Bassanio wants to go to Belmont Belmont another very famous city where bassanio wants to marry portia portia a wealthy lady her father had before his death wanted portia to choose her husband on the basis of the three caskets a lottery system now instead of going into the story just bassanio wanted to go to belmont but going to belmont needed money bassanio did not have the money So he asked Antonio for three thousand ducats to go to Belmont. 
but unfortunately Antonio does not have the ready sum. So he asks Shylock to lend him the money. Shylock lends him the money but on three conditions. That is, the money has to be returned, 3,000 ducats, one, two, within a certain period, that is a period of three months, three, if the money is not returned within a certain period of three months, within a period of three months, then Shylock will cut a pound of flesh from Antonio's body. Antonio is absolutely sure, he's a rich merchant of Venice, so he's absolutely sure that his ships, which have gone here and there, full of merchandise, full of goods, will come back. But alas, all his ships are wrecked and Antonio does not have the ready money. Three months have passed, Shylock is ready to take the pound of flesh. And the twist comes that Bassanio comes to know of it. Bassanio is already married to Portia. Portia goes to Venice, helps Antonio and then that portion is in class 10. And how Portia is able to save Antonio from the cruel clutches of Shylock. Interesting. It seems to be a very stereotypical story, but interesting nevertheless, because of the way the characters are shaped and molded by William Shakespeare. Now let us start with the play. But before we start with the play, let us see the dramatis personae, meaning the characters who are there in this particular play. First is the Duke of Venice. Next, the two suitors to Portia. Many suitors come, suitors is those who are proposing marriage to Portia. Many of them come. In Act 1, Scene 2, we come to know of many, many other suitors who, does not, who do not come in the forefront, but they are suitors. We come to know of many of them, six in particular. But the two suitors, besides Bassanio, whom we come to know of and who have a speech in the play are the Prince of Aragon and the Prince of Morocco, suitors to Portia. Then we have Antonio, the merchant of Venice, Bassanio, his friend and a suitor to Portia. And then we have many friends of Antonio and Bassanio. Selenio, Salerno, whom we meet. Selenio and Salerno we meet in Act 1, Scene 1. Graciano also we meet in Act 1, Scene 1. Celerio in Act 1, Scene 1. Then we have characters like Lorenzo, who is in love with Shylock's daughter, Jessica. Shylock, a rich Jew. Tubal, he's also a Jew and Shylock's friend. Launcelot Gobo. Shakespeare's plays always had a clown. Now he makes people laugh, he has a very good sense of humour, but very intelligently presented sense of humour. Very intelligent. He's not a fool, someone who's stupid, no. He's called a fool with a capital F-O-O-L, who is present in the person's court and who makes people laugh, who has the strongest intelligence in the play. That is Launcelot Gobo. And then we have his father, old Gobo, Leonardo, servant to Bassanio. Then we have the servants to Portia, Stefano and Balthosa, the heroine of the play, Portia, a rich heiress, H is silent, heiress, meaning she has inherited a lot of wealth from her father. Nerissa, who in the end marries Graciano, a friend of Antonio and Bassanio. Nerissa is her waiting maid, someone who's there with her, with Portia and always looking after her and giving her company. Jessica, who is the daughter of Shylock. And then of course, we have Magnificos, meaning many nobles, 
of Venice officers of the Court of Justice. There is a jailer, it's not goaler, but jailer, servants to Portia and other attendants. I am talking of this particular word, jailer. Okay? When Antonio gets arrested, then the jailer comes to arrest him. Servants to Portia and other attendants. These are the characters who are there in the play. We come to the first scene. Act 1, scene 1. We are doing Act 1, scene 1. Where is the scene taking place? Venice, a street. This is the place where the scene takes place. So when we're doing the question answers, I'll tell you exactly how you are going to write your answers. English literature, believe me, boys and girls, the answers are based on facts. Your answers will be based on facts. And it is very easy to answer questions and very easy also to get marks. So where does the scene take place? You just say Venice a street or a street in Venice. You don't have to write the full sentence. Okay, so now we meet the characters in Act 1, Scene 1. First is Antonio. Who is Antonio? The Merchant of Venice. And who are these two people, Salerno and Salanio? They are friends of Antonio. Remember that. Okay, both of them are friends of Antonio. They are friends of Antonio. Why are they here? Because Antonio, at the beginning of the scene, you will find that he is very sad. He is very sad and he does not know the reason for his sadness. You know, sometimes we are sad, we don't feel nice. Something is wrong somewhere, but we can't find out a reason why we are sad. Antonio feels the same. At the end of the scene, we'll find a reason why he's sad. Perhaps Antonio is not admitting that he is sad for this. But we will certainly come to know at the end of the scene why exactly he is sad. Now let us come to Antonio's speech where he is telling us that he is sad but he does not know the reason of his sorrow. And it makes him feel like a very uh, foolish person. He wants to know the reason of his sorrow. So we come to the play. Antonio, the words here. In sooth, I know not why I am so sad. It wearies me. You say it wearies you? How I caught it, found it, came by it. What stuff it is made up of, whereof it is born, I am to learn. Such a want with sadness, this is the word here, want which sadness makes of me that I have much ado to know myself. These are the words particularly in this particular speech of Antonio. In sooth we say no, we believe me, I really don't know why I am so sad. Truly. Okay? Truly. I do not know why I am sad. But this sorrow it makes me feel very tired. It wearies me. He's telling his friends, Salerno and Solanio, it makes you tired too. But I, how I caught it, found it, came by it, this it is sorrow. How this sorrow came to me, how did it originate, how I got the sorrow came, how I found, caught the sorrow, how the sorrow came to me, how I found the sorrow, how I got the sorrow, what stuff it is made of, of stuff meaning, meaning matter it is made of, of. Where was it born, meaning origin, where was its origin? I am to learn, I want to know. I am to learn, I want to know. But this sorrow makes him a fool. Because if you don't know the reason for your sorrow, you feel that you, you look and you feel very foolish. That I have much 
ado. Ado is difficulty. Okay. I have much difficulty in knowing myself. So truly speaking, why I am sad, I do not know. But it makes me feel very exhausted or tired. How I caught this sorrow, how I got this sorrow, how I found this sorrow, what mattered this sorrow is made up of, where did it origin, what is the reason for this sorrow, I have to learn, I have to know. But this sorrow makes me a want wit, it makes me a fool. I do not recognize myself, that I find it very difficult in knowing myself. So we know that Antonio is sad. Now his friends try to pep him up, his friends try to make him happy. That is what friends are for, they'll make you happy, they'll always be by your side and they'll also try to find a reason for your sorrow so that they can help you. So Celerino, he's his friend here, Celerino says, he tries to give a reason. You know why you are sad? Your mind is tossing on the sea. Where your argosies with portly sail like signiers and rich burgers on the flood. Till here. You're always thinking about your ships. Which are where they are in the ocean. They are there in the ocean and you're thinking about your ships. Because your argosies, meaning your merchant ships are there on the sea. With their portly, meaning magnificent. After all, he is the merchant of Venice. So the sails are magnificent. Your ships full of merchandise, goods. Merchant ships are there on the sail and the ships look like signiers and bergers. Signiers are rich gentlemen. They are called signiers and bergers are nobles. So your ships look like, you know, people who are of status. So here the ships are compared like simile, okay? So this is a simile here. Your ships are compared, the ships of Antonio, they're compared to gentlemen and nobles. So here, your ships are as, you know, splendid as the splendid gentlemen of Venice and the nobles of Venice. Or as it were, they are the pageants of the sea. To overpeer the petty traffickers that curtsy to them and do them reverence as they fly by them with their woven wings. Or as, as it were, the pageants of the sea. Pageant, the word rings a bell in your mind. Beauty pageant, show. Okay, so the word here is pageant. They are like a splendid show on the sea and they are overpearing meaning overshadow the petty petty means small and what are traffickers traffickers are the small commercial boats now how what is being said here i will be letting you know that to curtsy to them, curtsy meaning respect, reverence also meaning respect, and the woven wings are the sails. What is happening here? I've given you the meanings. What is happening here? I'll tell you why you are sad. Your mind is only thinking about your ships, your merchant ships, with their portly and magnificent sails, sailing on the sea. They look like the gentlemen and rich gentlemen and respected nobles of Venice. They are the show stoppers of the sea, pageants, 
not exactly showstopper, but the show, the display of the sea. They are the exhibit of the sea. And as the small commercial boats, small, petty, and traffickers, commercial boats, as they pass by the big ships, the small commercial boats are overshadowed by the big ships and the small commercial boats, they are paying them respect, them meaning the big ships, paying them respect, paying them reverence as these big ships speed past them with their portly sails. So on one hand, Salerno is consoling him. On the other hand, he is showing how respectful Antonio is. You know, you are sad because you are thinking about your ships. Will they return or will they not return? After all, a lot of money has, has been put into the ship. So will they return or will they not return? Your ships look wonderful. They are a magnificent show on the sea. The small commercial boats as they pass by your ship, they are overshadowed by your ships. The commercial boats, the petty traffickers, they pay respect to your ships as your ships fly past them with their woven wings. So the first reason given is because you are sad because you are thinking about your ships. Now his second friend Selenio also gives him a consolation. Believe me sir, had I such ventures forth, the better part of my affections would be my hopes abroad. I would still be plucking the grass. These are the various things he would be doing. To know where sits the wind. Peering in maps for ports, pyres and roads. And every object that would make me fear misfortune to my ventures out of doubt would me make me sad. Selerino says, you are thinking about your merchant ships and that is why you are sad. Selerino said that I would have been sad if I were in your place. Because after all, so much of money has been put in the ships. So I will have to be worried if my ships will return back to the harbour safe and sound or not. So he says, believe me sir, had I such ventures, what is the meaning of ventures? Business ventures. So if I had such business ventures like yours, the, the better part of my feelings, affections, would be with my ships, which are abroad. Abroad meaning here and there, all, par all parts of the world. I would always be thinking of my ships. I would be plucking, meaning pulling the grass. Why? To know which side the grass is blowing. The grass doesn't blow, but the wind blows and the grass just moves. To know the direction of the wind, where sits the wind. To know the direction of the wind. So I would know that my ships have gone to that direction. They are safe or they are not safe. I would be looking, peering meaning, I would be looking at the maps. My ship is here. For ports is where the ships harbour, for pyres and for roads. I would be plucking the grass, I would be pulling the grass to see the direction of the wind. I would be looking at the maps for ports, for pyres. What are pyres? Pyres meaning channels, I would sign roads. And every object that may bring harm to my ship would make me frightened. And that is why I think without doubt, that is what makes you sad. Because you are thinking about your ship. You're thinking about the direction of the wind. You're looking in the maps for the ports and channels and roads. And anything that you see wrong, you are frightened. Why? Because you think, there goes my ship. And that is what is making you sad.
Thank you.